thanks for having sympathy for the suicide case there. Doctors are apparent suicide. Okay, so Nurse Ratched here doesn't get her way, but it's still getting pretty tiresome that no one believes that these dreams are dangerous. Honestly, think of another way to keep these movies going. Of course, in spite of them winning the argument against Dr. Bitch, none of these teens ever go on hypnosil, so that entire discussion was utterly pointless. It almost didn't need to be introduced in the movie at all. Although without it, there would be no explanation for how Nancy survived unless she was also only getting chased for a long ass time. You all have special abilities in your dreams. It's just like a team of superheroes, only stupid and incredibly lame. Not to mention utterly inappropriate for a horror movie. You sound like Peter Pan. Yes, thank you. At least someone in this movie realizes. Yeah, Joey, we get it. The nurse is clearly Freddy. She's hot until then, though. We're here! And queer. Oh my fucking god, they do magic tricks in their dreams. In my dreams, I'm beautiful. By goth standards, anyway. So, Freddy has all that time with Joey, and all he does is putting him in a fucking coma? Enough with the fucking faith crap. Okay, should I point out that that mother was actually pretty much of a fucking bitch before she was decapitated. In fact, I think decapitation made her less of a bitch because now she's attributing the whole you want attention to the psychologist. God damn it, she just pulled the fucking matrix running up the wall. So she hesitated because he's got syringe fingers. I get that he's using her weakness against her, but other than reminding her that she did drugs, why would that work? Was she bothered by the fact that he knew? Okay, I'm not a fan of role-playing games, but I can't be the only one bothered by the kid getting up and saying, I am the wizard master, then fucking zapping him. Seriously, what is with the tone of this film? Are we watching Gremlins now? No, we're not, because Gremlins was actually darker than this. I also don't get how anyone who liked the first one could accept how this one mangles the characters of Nancy Thompson and her father. They were way more likable in the first one, and it's not like this one has likable characters in abundance. I mean, he's a drunk, he doesn't want to help out with taking care of Freddy. You found your dream power, man. And the audience lost their lunch. How fucking pathetic of a death for Nancy was that, the hero of the first movie. I mean, this ranks right up there with killing off Sarah Connor off-screen for the third movie. Or almost, at least. This was a woman who overcame her fears, dealt with the death of her boyfriend and her two best friends, or her best friend and, and that chick's boyfriend, whatever, and had enough chick balls to turn her back on a killer. And she gets tricked. Why did she even believe that that was Saxon? I've crossed over what, so now you're in the dream world? Is the human subconscious now plagued with dead people? I see dead people, only they don't know they're dead. And I only see them in my dreams anyway. Oh my god, Kruger's punch almost connected with her. And again, hey, he's made of stars. Am I the only one who really hated the bastards judging these kids? Oh, they- This has got to be the weakest ending of the first three movies. The Jump to a Nightmare feature only has seven nightmares this time. Moving on to A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. First, the spoiler-free review. They stick with the whole idea of having special abilities in dreams, and this time they can be transferred. And that's about the only thing this really does terribly different from the third one. Well, that and it tries to be more funny, I guess. The teenagers from the third one return, and the only one that's been recast, as far as I can tell, is Patricia Arquette. This one is by Rennie Harlan, who gave us another unwanted sequel with Die Hard 2, who directed the fairly lackluster Deep Blue Sea, and I hear the Driven is terrible. In this one, it really seems like they were just running on fumes. The creative gags are very few and far between. The effects are hit and miss, if there are some pretty good ones among them. It's again bizarre and at least weird more than creepy. 
Kruger's one-liners are pretty good, and there are plenty of them. The characters are boring, obnoxious, or uninteresting, and there are way too many of them, so by the time it enters its third act, I honestly didn't feel any sort of connection with almost anyone, because it tries to have so many, and it doesn't manage to develop all of them. I would say England is the only one delivering a good performance, and he always does. I've yet to see him do poorly. This is 83 minutes sans credits, and I gotta say, if you can't come up with more than that, don't you think you have too little to make a movie out of? I'd also be most interested to find out why the fuck this opens and closes with pop music. Spoilers ahoy. Again, it's pretentious enough to open with a quote, only before it was Edgar Allan Poe, and this time the best they could come up with was the Bible. Yeah, okay, we get it. Chains. The little girl is a bad actor yet again. You know, maybe they should have some supernatural killer kill seasoned veteran actors. Then again, I'm not sure I really want to hear Clint Eastwood sing a jump rope song. Or... No, no, that'd be terrible. Aw, oh, Kristen, not again. Kincaid? I concur. Dude, you are way too white for those martial arts. Okay, the effects on Freddy coming back to life weren't bad. It was dorky how he shook off the hat, though. Why the zoom out Freddy's back thing? Well, finally he at least killed someone in their sleep again. And this time he's just stabbing people in their sleep. That's the least interesting way to kill someone in this series so far. I mean, if you go back and watch the first one, yes, he sometimes... But more of the time, it was just the idea that you could get hit with these knives. You know, he'd run them across pipes, and you knew that they were there, but this is the first time he's just stabbing people. Other slashers do that perfectly well. We don't need more of those. Enough with the awful parents already. God, that brother is irritating. Wow, she gets knocked out in class like that? That is really far-fetched. Oh look, it's the male, female, male, nurse? Kristen's even worse this time around. Is it just me or did the mother drive away? I guess it was someone else, but it really seemed like that was her. I mean, someone clearly drove away, and it seemed to be right after the mother walked away and got in the car. Stop having other characters force these characters to sleep just because the other characters don't get that their dreams are dangerous. It's getting old. Ah, it's the Freddy from the Black Lagoon. So, she gets into the sand trap. Why didn't that kill her? Kruger, we get it. You're ripped. Stop showing off your chest. You'll need my power. And we are officially in all fantasy movie. I, I think I see a shark. And the movie just... jumped it. Isn't it depressing how the first half hour of this movie basically undoes the entire last movie? Sucking Sheila to death was pretty cool, and an appropriate metaphor for what the whole dream mastering concept is doing to the franchise. Can something in one of these sequels please have some fucking consequence? He never kills anyone, he just barely killed Sheila. In the first one, he fucking killed you. No, you can't keep that going for very long sequels, so don't make them! Why did he kill Sheila, anyway? It was the other person's dream, and she was the one more dangerous to him, with the ability and all. Oh my god, I brought her into my dream. That means the producers are seriously pursuing this ridiculous idea. Trapped in an elevator, that's not too bad. The fight with Invisible Freddy wasn't even remotely scary. Ah, so we now have four deaths, and three of them are stabbings. This kills off all the main characters, so about 53 minutes into it, other than Alice, I basically don't know any of these people. Huh, she's being sucked into the movie theater screen. I guess it's one of those new 4D cinemas. Okay, the deja vu thing with Freddy having them go in circles was pretty cool. Okay, the deja vu thing with Freddy having them... Did I just do this bit? Since this insists on having so many characters and such a high body count, the last to survive other than maybe Alice are the ones we know and care the least about.